Boundary conditions. In this video, I'm just going to outline other options for boundary conditions. Here's a summary of what we've done up to this point. We needed to calculate a second order derivative all the way across the grid. So we have sort of our standard approximation for a second order derivative, and that works for all the interior points. We came across a problem at the end points, and so what we did is we derived our own special finite difference equations for the first and last points. I would call this a higher order boundary condition. Maybe there's another name, I like that. And the reason that I chose four points here is if we chose three points, it would have been the same finite difference as the second order derivative at this point. And so since we're at the edge of the grid, we don't have information from out here, we're already suffering a little bit for accuracy. So I said, you know what, let's actually calculate it from four points and maybe that'll help a little bit. So that's why I chose the four points at the edges. So that's the higher order boundary condition. What other options are there? We have Dirichlet boundary conditions. This is where we assume the function value from outside of the grid is zero. And this is pretty simple because we can use our standard finite difference, but just when we need a value from outside of the grid, we set it to zero. So still, in a way, these edge points get their own special finite difference. It's kind of the one we're using for all the other points, but with a term set to zero. So we still have to treat them separately. Now, when can we use this? We can only use this when we are calculating or simulating something that truly does go to zero very far away from the center. And I see this all the time in waveguide analysis, calculating modes of transmission lines, because all the electromagnetic fields are right there at the waveguide. And as we move away, they decay and they do eventually reach zero and Dirichlet boundary conditions can be used there. Other times I've used this when I'm doing wave simulations, I'll have sort of this thick region of loss at the boundary. And so when the wave hits that, it gets absorbed and it decays. And so by the time the wave really does reach the edge of the grid, it really doesn't even matter what kind of boundary condition I use. So just for simplicity, I'll use Dirichlet boundary condition in addition to those absorbing boundary conditions. But if for some reason your function does not go to zero, we can't use these boundary conditions because it would certainly force it to be zero and we would get an incorrect answer. Next is a periodic boundary condition. Periodic structures are a very big deal in many areas of science. In my area, in electromagnetics, there's photonic crystals, there's metamaterials, frequency selective surfaces, metasurfaces, all kinds of crazy things. And a periodic structure is periodic. The wave is also periodic. And so the functions that we simulate are periodic. And so if it is periodic, and we would typically simulate one repetition of that periodic function. And so if we need a value from outside the grid, we would just grab the value from the other side of the grid. So we use our typical finite difference approximation at the edge of the grid, but where we would need the F0, we're going to reach to the other side of the grid and drop an F7 in here. Likewise, we're using our standard second order finite difference approximation and where we would need an F8 from outside the grid, we will reach to the other side and drop an F1 in that place. Now we have forced that function to be periodic. And really what we're doing is we're calculating something that would be infinitely periodic in the X direction, but numerically we only have to process one single repetition, a lot of times called a unit cell of that. So very numerically efficient, and this is used all the time for simulating periodic structures. Newman boundary conditions. Let's say we have a function. We don't even know what it's going to be doing at the boundary. We just kind of want it sort of to continue off. And so strictly speaking, a Newman boundary condition says functions continue linearly outside of the grid that we're processing on. So if they continue linearly, that means when we're at the edge of the grid, we need to estimate a first order derivative and we would just grab these two points. Even though anywhere else in the grid, if we are estimating a, a first order derivative, let's say we're estimating the first order derivative of F3, we would say F4 minus F2 divided by two times delta X. But at the edge of the grid to do that, 
I would just reach over to F2, and the finite difference approximation will be F2 minus F1 divided by delta X, and that's exactly what we're doing here. And so that assumes that whatever the derivative is between those two points, it just continues off forever that way. And the other side of the grid, the same thing. The finite difference approximation for a first order derivative of this point, I would simply say F7 minus F6 divided by delta X. Now the second order derivative, if this function's assumed to continue to continue linearly outside of the grid, that's the Newman boundary condition, then the second order derivative has to be zero at that last point because a linear function has no second order derivative. And this is used a lot too when I have something that is just basically varying linearly and I want it to look like it's just passing outside of the grid, this Newman boundary condition works beautifully. These are not the only boundary conditions. I think these are just some of the more common ones or certainly the more common ones that I have used. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.